New inflation data released yesterday shows consumer price increases remain moderate in November ahead of a key decision by Federal Reserve officials later today on whether to raise interest rates. With the new data, economists expect the Federal Reserve to keep those rates unchanged, at least for the moment. Joining us now, former Treasury official, Morning Joe economic analyst Steve Ratner. Steve, good morning. Does that sound right to you, sort of the conventional wisdom? And actually what we've heard from the Fed for the last couple of weeks is that they may be done with the rate hikes for now. Yeah, I think they are done with their. This is going to be an unusual meeting because for the for uh, an unusual uh, thing, they're going to be focused not so much on the rate increases, but on what the future of the economy looks like. And they will do what they do every three months which is to reduce what's called their, uh, release what's called their summer of economic projections. And what people are going to be watching for is the Fed ready to declare, in effect, a soft landing. We were all hoping that we would be able to get inflation down without a recession. A lot of private economists are now saying that we think that's going to happen, in part because of that price report that you just referenced. Price is only up 3.1 percent over last year. And it'll be interesting to see whether the Fed gets on board. The market is expecting significant interest rate cuts next year. The Fed has been more reticent about that in their, in their last economic report. We'll see what they have to say later today. So for all the grumbling about these ongoing rate hikes from the Fed, does it look like, given the data we now have and even this data yesterday, that it got the outcome it wanted by taming inflation with those rate hikes? Yeah, Willie, and I, I would say inflation has come down, come, down, come down faster and further than probably any of us would have guessed. Uh, I, I don't think many economists, there's almost no history of taming inflation of this magnitude without some kind of recession. And I don't want to declare victory completely, but that's the trajectory we're on at the moment, uh, that things are looking, looking pretty good. We had also had a good jobs report since we last talked about this. We had good economic growth reports. It's really an exceptional economy on many levels that the president gets no credit for. If you looked at that recent poll uh, and the handling of the economy, the popularity of uh, Bidenomics, which is under 30 percent approval rate of Bidenomics, it's an, a disconnect that I can't remember seeing uh, in many years of watching all this stuff. Well, I, I, think, I think it's there are a lot of these numbers are leading indicators that at some point will uh, start. If we continue going in this direction, I think we will start to see more of an impact uh, but so much of it, Steve, goes on, you know, how much are people paying when they go to the pump? It's less now. Obviously, gas prices continue to go down. But where prices don't continue to go down are at the supermarket. People feel that in a real way. I'm curious, what's still driving? Because this is one sector that continues uh, to, to, like, hammer Americans in their pocketbook. Uh, what, what drives the inflation at the grocery store? What's driving inflation uh, for food? Well, actually, Joe, inflation for food has also come down a lot. I think it was also up something in the 3 4 percent range year over year. Uh, we, we did have uh, food is a very idiosyncratic category because it depends a lot on weather. We had uh, the problem of avian flu where chicken prices went up. We had a problem with eggs. You, you have a lot of different factors driving it. But here's a fact that probably most people don't know. Two facts that most people probably don't know. Inflation on goods everything from used cars to computers to televisions, it's actually turned into deflation. Prices on those items are actually lower than they were a year ago. You're going to pay right. less this Christmas for a lot of things, toys, things like that, that you're going to buy for your kids than you did a year ago. The second thing that most Americans may not realize is that in the past year, their incomes have gone up on average about 4 percent. Prices on average have gone up a little over 3 percent. So, in fact, you do have what economists call real after-tax income. The amount of purchasing right. power that Americans have is actually going up at the moment, mostly because inflation right. has come down so much. And yet none of this has permeated the polls, people's uh, appreciation of what's going on, people's sense of positive or versus pessimism kind of attitude. Uh, it's, it's, I've never seen quite this much disconnect between the state of an economy and the state of how people feel about the economy. Well, you can thank certain news networks for that. Yeah, housing but, you know, we have 3 percent. Yeah, housing market's tough. The Wall Street Journal had a great uh, piece a couple of days ago about how this is just not the time to buy a house. It's still the time you to, can't rent to, to rent a house, it so. would, but it costs less. Uh, but but I, I want to go back again. Um, you're right. Electronics and, and a lot of other goods, we're actually, we're actually going to be having deflation this year on those items. But again, groceries, what, what, what drives prices up in grocery stores? 
Well, again, Joe, first of all, I would just emphasize that food price inflation has moderated a lot. It's only it's also uh, yeah, the three well, to four percent. I, I haven't seen it. I mean, I, 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 that's what I, I still hear people complaining about it. Right? No, well, I, I mean, I, you're I, laughing and I see charts, too, that show. It's no, I'm, really I'm actually I'm better. actually. I was actually just laughing at, at thinking about you in the grocery store, but that's a different no, that's me. a different subject no. for a different day. No. Actually, he, he, it, it, he comes it, with me. It's so. Mika, but if, if you if you compare though, the problem is as we've said before, if you compare what people were paying in a grocery store for bread or milk in 2019 with what they're paying today, yeah, maybe it's uh, only three percent higher than it was last year, but it's 19, 20 percent higher than it was in 2019. People are still feeling that. No question, Joe. Look, we did have a lot of inflation go through the system. And for a while, we did have very high energy costs. That affects farmers. We did have these supply chain problems. So when a farmer needed a piece of equipment or something like that, it costs more. We did have uh, a lot of the uh, lower wage workers get very substantial pay increases, which is great for them, the grocery store workers, people like that. But that increases costs at the grocery store and drives up prices. So we definitely did have a lot of inflation moving through the system, which did raise food prices to a permanent level. And I think we, you may be uh, obliquely referring to a point that I'd also just like to mention, which is that something like two thirds of the people who are going to vote next year were not voting 30 years ago, the last time we had inflation over 4%. They've never seen inflation like this. So this comes as a shock to them. And they, some of them at least kind of expect prices to then go back down again to where they were before. That doesn't happen. We, and in fact, deflation is actually kind of a bad thing. And so you, people just have no experience with this, and they're trying to wrap their minds around it, and they're taking it out on President Biden, uh, which is not entirely fair at all. And Richard, it's worth pointing out, not only is the economy, the data, the, uh, the economy doing well here in the United States, or better in here in the United States, is doing much better than competitive economies around the world in terms of growth and unemployment and other factors you look at. We are the envy of the world right now. Uh, I was just out in Asia. Uh, Chinese are going through all their difficulties, Willie. Europe is doing, you know, okay. But again, they look at us and they, they think we've got it, you know, re re really good. And it's, uh, again, you know, Steve just alluded to the political issues. But I think, you know, the Fed came under tremendous criticism here for allowing inflation to ramp up. This doesn't undo that, but they seem to have gotten this side of the cycle much better. So uh, Jay, I think Jay Powell's, shall we say, historical legacy is looking better today than it looked a couple of years ago. All right, Richard Haas, thank you. And Steve Radner, uh, if we could get you to return tomorrow with the charts from the Southwest Wall, we would appreciate that. that would thank be, you very that would be much. Very, very exciting. Yeah.